take a little bit of bass as well. Uh, you can turn it up a little bit, just a teeny bit. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, hey, test mic. Rolling? Okay, Let's do it, man. This one is called Western Kids. Today on the sessions at Midori House, we have Minnesotan indie four-piece hippocampus in the studio. The band met while studying music at school and have been putting out EPs for the past couple of years. 2017 sees them release their debut album, Landmark, which they worked on with BJ Burton, producer of the likes of Lowe and Bon Iver. Landmark sees the boys hone their sound and come up with an album that sounds more grown up than their previous work, but still able to have a bit of fun. We'll hear from Jake and Nathan from Hippocampus shortly, but first, let's have some music. See how the Western kid have seen a cone inside the lid. A mask for it up there. For the love that their parents give. The northern girls, they play the part. With pain and faints, they works of art. I swear to God, I felt the thing. The perfume of, of one in June. And I just love it. I swear I'll go viral. And the pops through the streets now. It's a revival. The spirit is founded. The idealist, the idol, the age of excess. Of a kind of man, the social lights their brooding hand, the silhouettes they play the part with painted face, their works of art. But the sickness sleeps inside our bones with solipsistic overtone, and I. I swear I go viral from the pubs to the streets now. It's a revival. The spirit is founded. The idealist, the idol, the age of excess. Jake and Nathan from Hippocampus, welcome to the sessions at Midori House. Thank you. Thanks. And welcome to the UK. You've just finished touring around for a few days. How's that been? Wonderful. It's been amazing. Yeah. Good times, good shows, good people, good vibes. (laughs) Well, you were playing from your debut album, Landmark. I wanted to start with the name of the album. What made you want to call it Landmark? I guess it stemmed from the process of touring that we went through 2015 and all the experiences that we had and that provided a lot of inspiration for the music that we were writing at the time so most of the songs that made it on the record were from that and 
I guess the word landmark sort of stuck out because we had gone to a performing arts high school back in our hometown, and the building that the school was in was called the Landmark Center. We're all about, like, double entendres and whatnot, and so it was sort of a double meaning with the landmark year that we had had, as well as paying homage to where we came from. And then, symbolically speaking, it was sort of self-representative of our process as a band and the growth that we had gone through and wanting to make an album that we could look back on and be like, okay, that's where we were. And so it sort of just spoke for itself, I suppose. All the songs on this album were new songs. They weren't taken from any of your former EPs or anything. How was the writing process for this different to all your former stuff? I think just in the fact that we had a a long break before we started writing again. We wrote the two EPs and then we were on tour pretty consistently for about a year and a half to two years. So we had kind of this gap where we were just performing almost constantly. We weren't writing a lot of songs. We didn't have opportunities to get, get in a room and make music together. So I think this process was different in the fact that we sort of had to learn that language with each other again. And also just writing with expectations was another another interesting thing to grapple with because people had heard the EPs and, and we were faced with the predicament of do we want to write music for ourselves? Do we want to write music for our audience? Do we want to write music for labels? Or kind of taking stock of, of why why we're doing this in the first place. So it was all a big journey. But. Yeah. And when you've been on the road and playing the songs that you have and then you take that time to write a new album are you thinking about you know when you were playing these songs what worked and what didn't work and what you want to do more and less of how does what came before influence what you do next yes and no it's um the studio is an instrument in itself and we had never spent more than a couple days in a studio at any given moment and so with this new record working on it for a year straight you know there was a lot of back and forth and a lot of different things that we hadn't learned before and so the whole thing was a process of discovery and experimentation and so man I still don't know how it works it's kind of a blur but yeah a lot of things come into play when you're tracking a guitar you know when you're zooming in that close on something it it gets hard to understand what's going on but you just feel it out and take it day by day You worked with the producer BJ Burton on this album. He's worked with people like Lowe and Bon Iver. What sort of influence did he have on the final product? BJ was a very important part of of the process and us sort of learning how to navigate the studio. I think something that was missing on our first two EPs, just for me personally, was just like inability to just use that studio, like Nathan was saying, as an instrument. And that's a producer's job, is to sort of take a band and then utilize that studio as an instrument to kind of put out what they do best, you know, and and have it come across sonically in the way the band wants. And so BJ took what we had, and he really gave us, like, a fresh palette to work with. He was big on getting rid of instruments if they didn't need to be there, parts if they didn't need to be there. And he challenged us just to to think outside the box using things like an OP-1 or, like, a drum machine or pianos here and there, acoustic guitars here and there. Mm -hmm. Um, But BJ was all about serving the song, and I think that was the the biggest lesson I took away, was just to always serve the song and and take any sort of ego out of the equation when recording or making music. Yeah, he's a a chill dude, too. That's really good. Oh, yeah, he's a homie. Yeah, he's a homie. For sure. This one is called Simple Season. Fine, yeah. 
wake up down in the backyard This simple season is all ours, yeah The finished product, were you surprised by what it sounded like or is it kind of what you set out to make? Yeah, I'm surprised, I guess, yeah. We realised that with those questions of, like, who are we writing for, why are we doing what we're doing, somewhere along the line, we took a step back and we were like, we'll just write. We don't have to really question what's going on, we'll just do it. And what came out, the, the final product, is uh, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it and what it means and playing the songs live for like the first time was really interesting this last week just playing new new songs for a bunch of people who'd never heard these songs before and but it feels like the album is still happening i guess i guess working out for a live audience is another beast in its own right it's terrible so- <laughs> <laughs> Well, it sounded pretty good today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I think mostly right now, just for me personally, it's it's confidence starting to build with these new songs. It's sort of seeing like, oh, these are working and people are sort of catching on to this. And I think it'll help a lot in the States when we, because that tour kind of begins before we release the record. And I think there might, might be like a handful of dates before, but then the record will come out and then people will know the songs. And I'm looking forward to when everybody can know them and sing them the same way they sing the other ones. But I think just what I took away from this tour was just confidence and that we can do it. And it's going to be a great tour, I think. Hi, we're Hippocampus, and this song is called The Way It Goes.
go. You've been listening to the sessions at Maduri House. This week's guests were Hippocampus and their new album Landmark is out on the 24th of February on Transgressive Records. The band are about to embark on a North American tour, so head to hippocampusband.com for more information. The show was produced by me, Holly Fisher, and mixed by Alex Funnel. Join us again at the same time next week, but for the time being, thanks for tuning in. Oh.